I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on vectors. We'll discuss properties of dot product in this video. I'll actually begin with the basic geometric interpretation of dot product and from there we'll develop the whole concept. What we know about is that if there are two vectors a and b then their dot product is defined as product of their magnitudes times cosine of angle between them. So whenever we write like this, we are also assuming that vector A is not equal to vector B and that is not equal to the zero vector. So we are basically concentrating on non-zero vectors. Right. This is important to specify since if any one of them is a zero vector then you get a zero result and many properties which we will discuss may not hold good right okay so we are saying there are two vectors a and b their dot product is product of their magnitudes with the angle between them so let me represent the vectors like this this is this is my vector a and let's take another vector b at an angle theta to it and the angle between them is let's say theta so here is vector a this is vector b angle between them is theta so when we say a b cos theta in that case if i change the order let's say if i write b dot a then it becomes what if i write b dot a it becomes magnitude of b times magnitude of a cos of theta now you see we are just multiplying two magnitudes right since we are multiplying two magnitudes we see that both are same right so so we can say that b dot a is same as magnitude of a times magnitude of b times cosine of theta so that gives us one result and that is that the commutative property that is to say that a dot b is equal to b dot a right so the order does not really matter it is mainly because this is a scalar quantity the result is a scalar right so therefore it's just a magnitude or the lengths being multiplied with the angle cosine of that so the nothing changes here so this quantity remains same order could be different now let us consider that what happens when the angle is increased now if we notice that a dot b is basically equal to the magnitudes of a and b times cos of theta. Now if theta is equal to 90 degrees, in that case what happens? For 90 degrees, cos of 90 degrees is equal to 0. So that is to say that if theta is 90 degrees, then whatever may be the magnitude of a and b the result will be zero so we can say that a dot b is equal to zero if theta is equal to 90 degrees correct so what we're trying to say here is that for orthogonal vectors or you can say perpendicular dot product is zero now initially i have said that a and b should not be equal to zero right now it was to be on the safe side if a and b one of them is zero or both of them are zero vectors in that case for any angle you will get zero right the result 
So there will be a confusion and that is why we have declared in the very beginning that A and B are non-zero vectors. And if in that case you get zero as a dot product, then the vectors are perpendicular, right? That is very important to understand. Now let's look into the case when theta is equal to zero degrees. Now if theta is zero degrees, then cos theta is what? Then cos theta is one, right? So, so a dot b will be equal to the magnitude of a times magnitude of b, right? for cos of zero degrees. So that will actually result into maximum dot product. Correct? Whenever theta is zero. Now here we have to realize one more thing. What happens if I multiply vector by itself? In that case, always angle is zero. So what we get here is that we get magnitude of A times magnitude of A times cos of zero degrees. So that will be equal to the square of the magnitude. Correct? So this is again a very important property. And we say that the dot product of vector by itself is square of its magnitude. Okay. So if you need to find the magnitude of a vector, you could actually have a dot product of itself and then figure it out by doing square root of that, right? So this is a very important property which at times we can use to find magnitude of vectors. Now in, in vectors, if I multiply by a scalar, then what happens? Let's say k is a scalar quantity, right? So if k is a scalar quantity, then a dot b will be equal to k times a dot b and it will also be same if I change the order, that is to say, if I do a times a dot, I should say, k times b, even then we get the same result. In all the three cases, what we see that the result will be k times magnitude of a times magnitude of b times cosine of the angle between them, right? So this is called the associated property of dot product. Dot product also exhibits distributive property, right? which is to say that if I'm adding two vectors E and B and then multiplying, or if I have a dot product with the vector C, in that case, A dot C plus B dot C is my result, right? Now this order can be changed. Right? This order can be changed. So we get A dot C plus B dot C. That is the distributive property. I could also do C dot A plus B. In that case also, the result is going to be the same. Looking into the commutative property, both will say give us the same result. Right. So in any case, what we are doing in this here is we are distributing. Right. So we are doing dot product of vector C with A and with B and then adding the result, right? So that is the distributive property of dot product. Is it clear? Correct. So these are major properties of dot products which you have to keep in mind. Few interesting facts. And let this be a question for you. The question is, 
can dot product be negative can dot product be negative so that is the equation for you the answer of course is is yes right yes and that is going to be the case if the angle is more than 90 degrees right so so what do you notice here as the angle increases the dot product decreases and becomes more negative as it crosses 90 degrees right so so it could be negative if theta is greater than 90 degrees right so normally when we are talking about the angle theta we normally take 0 to 180 degrees angle right so there is because if it is on the other side we will take the acute angle perfect so we can say when theta is greater than 90 degrees so cos theta will be negative is less than zero so we'll get a negative result now negative does not really give a direction right you understand it is still a quantity which we are looking into right so it should not be treated as a vector remember it is still a scalar right so still the result is scalar but we could interpret this as a negative value correct so that is what we would like to conclude with as far as the dot product properties are concerned now it is i don't mean to say that you cannot have a and b as uh, zero vectors you could have zero vectors also in that case also all these properties will be fine but the only problem will be in saying the reverse of this that is to say that if dot product is zero then the vectors are perpendicular right remember when you mention these properties right in that case it is very important to specify that a and b are non-zero vectors right because if one of them is zero then you get the result zero whether the angle is 90 or whatever correct so so that doesn't really make much sense and therefore it is a good point to specify that a and b are non-zero vectors in objective type questions many times we will say if a dot b is equal to zero then that means they are orthogonal vectors the answer is no the condition should also be mentioned that a and b are non-zero vectors perfect that's what i'm trying to tell you right so i hope that makes it clear so these are all the properties of uh, dot product which you should keep in mind and they help us to do uh, many problems related to vectors i hope you find it interesting and useful feel free to write your comment share your views and if you share my videos that would be great thanks for watching and all the best